Hello and welcome to another episode of Nocturne Professional Walkthroughs. My name is Max and today we will continue our adventure in the Graveyard Keeper. On today's episode we will speak with more NPCs, fulfill some quests and see how further we can progress in our story. As you can see I have been working on gathering some resources as the billets are necessary for the crematorium which I have finally unlocked therefore we will be able to start burning bodies and keep earning burial certificates as I'm trying to make sure I will accomplish as much as possible during each episode I might end up sometimes running around the house and trying to craft more items from the available resources so I do apologize for certain segments when it looks like I keep returning to the same blueprint however as I do not have an official plan written down somewhere I try to keep everything ready and if not I try to cram as much as possible into each episode there is only a place for one trunk, therefore most of the billets and the remains from the bodies will be stored there. You get only few items whenever you burn a body. The most important item in the start of the game for us is the burial certificate. The ashes, the other powders, that is later on used in alchemy and other crafts for the graveyard. However, we are far from those yet, so I will not go into the details, as by the time we arrive there, you will long forget about it, or you have seen already someone else's walkthrough where they have a flushed out graveyard, while I have a complete dumpster fire. I'm starting to think that maybe I should try an episode where I would skip all the wood cutting, all the crafting and only put in all the fun stuff such as interaction with the NPCs etc etc. So please do let me know in the comment section, this will definitely help me improve. As also, this might help us speed up the gameplay as I have looked on YouTube for other walkthroughs and I saw that they had 44 and up to 100 something episodes and I'm not sure how much time do you guys want to invest into watching me fail miserably. We're gonna spend a little time in the kitchen and I'm gonna be turning the wheat into flour. As we do not have access to the mill as of now, I have to do this manually. I will do this as we are running low on bread and bread is a good source of energy in the start of the game as it gives us 15 energy apiece and uh, cooking the bread is not that expensive when it comes to the fire. So we get lots of food for not a long time and especially if we go to bed the cooking continues so when we wake up we can have bunch of loaves all over the floor in our house because who doesn't like freshly baked bread of the floor mmm yum yum Have you heard this one before? What did the bag of flour say to the loaf of bread? I saw you yesterday. Why doesn't bread like warm weather? Things get toasty. Okay, so today the merchant will arrive into the town and as in the previous episode we did collect the hiccup grass and we finally collected our first harvest of crops we are able to go and fulfill the two quests for him therefore this should allow us to progress further within the story 
So I will go gather up the produce, store away all the unnecessary stuff, and go grab all that we require. So 12 beads by the graveyard keeper, 12 cabbage, and 12 carrots. Why I'm gathering water is however unknown to me right now. And we will work on increasing the yard space. We did unlock the iron anvil, therefore I will be replacing the wooden one with it so we can craft the advanced iron parts. This will allow us to get more crafting area and more blueprints down. As I said in the previous episode, I will definitely want to go for the second furnace as this will greatly improve our crafting speed and give us more access to materials. So once again, we will head through the underground to speak with the merchant as by doing this I save about 3 minutes of running on the surface. Later on in the game, the traveling will not be as much necessary. We drop off the hiccup grass, we collect the story. And here comes another information for the future quest which we will need to fulfill for our merchant. He will tell us about the local witch who is actually within the marshes behind the church and the graveyard where we fixed the bridge. So I will need to definitely go back and visit her. We also find out that the bishop is the merchant's brother. Later on in the game this will come to play, so let's hope for episode 38. <laughs> Here we are told that the quality of the produce is not sufficient, especially if the merchant wants to sell it in the town. So therefore, any beets, cabbage and carrots can only be sold to the farmer, from whom we purchase the seeds as well. I've actually never done a comparison of cost of seeds versus the resulted harvest. Therefore, I'm not sure which seeds are actually profitable to purchase. However, I still think that the cost of the seed is higher than the overall produce until later on in the game where we can unlock bronze, silver and golden star quality. Here is one of the most important quests which we will do, trade license. By doing the trade license we will unlock the small house behind the merchant. Through this house we will be able to sell produce and other items. However, in order to obtain the trading license we will need to fulfill a bunch of quests within the church and the graveyard to increase our overall citizen status. Therefore, we have lots of work to do. Okay, let's head back home. And we will do some more crafting.
later on in the game I will work on getting rid of all the blockades underground. This will allow us to travel from the church to our house, from our house to the morgue, and have all the underground connected. This way I don't always have to step outside, move to another location, and do some work there. Okay, here we will work on getting the items to expand the area. I still need some more items, so let's craft them. This is why having two furnaces would be much more convenient. We would have twice as many iron ingots in our disposal. Later in the game, when the furnaces are upgraded, they generate more ingots and also allow us to craft steel and other more valuable resources. However, by doing all the manual labor, we are at least getting the red points. These will definitely come in handy. So, here you see that the marsh which was to the right from the house has now been cleared out. Only thing that remains are two trees which we still cannot unlock, for which we actually require further lumberjack technology. Our outhouse still remains, so at least we can do the business there. It's a shame there's no newspaper to read while we are there. But as we are super busy, I don't think we can spend too much time there anyhow. Okay, let's go hit the bed and progress further in our story later on. So let's see what we got prepared for us on the next day. So we're gonna once again store all the items which we do not require as there is no option for us to upgrade our backpack therefore we will always work only with limited storage space. Later on when we unlock more blueprints we will be able to craft and process billets and other wooden parts in much faster and less energy demanding way. I have finally managed to put down the second furnace and in order to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing I will make the two furnaces face each other. I load it up with the remaining firewood and we start to make some more ingots. As I still did not go and unlock the iron ore deposit to which the coal deposit is close by, I'm still relying on the firewood, however once the coal will be at my disposal I will definitely make a coal run. Billets are however always gonna be necessary for the crematorium. So we will always have to keep crafting these parts, especially in later of the game when we will no longer be able to bury any more bodies, therefore cremating the remains of any corpse which will be brought to us will still give us the burial certificate and we might be able to store it in the columbarium at the graveyard. Okay, I'm gonna put away the stories as later on we will use them to craft more documents, prayers and earn more blue points. And yes, here you can actually make up prayers. 
in the technology tree you will be able to see later on in the game that there are quite few options for me. However, most likely right now I will go work on unlocking some of the underground tunnels. As you can see, tomorrow the Inquisition will arrive, so I should get ready and prepare for them and have at least firewood ready. Okay, here is our problem. We require wooden beam which is a technology not yet accessible to us, so we will require 10 blue points. What I might have to do is research the remaining body parts in order for us to obtain this technology and unlock the tunnels. Since I do not have the beams yet, I'm putting away all the items which I had prepared and instead I will make some gravestones. The graveyard is still in shambles, so whenever I can I will try to craft some items to improve the overall quality as also the status of the graveyard affects the outcome of the sermon. And since I have unlocked the Forager perk, getting more mushrooms is now much more easier. So let's head into our graveyard and go take a look on what we require to make the church bench. So six planks and four nails. This should be cheap, so we should be able to manage till the next sermon to unlock as many of them as possible. We can have maximum of 6. Okay, so I don't have the fate points, the science points, so we cannot unlock the dungeons where the snake is trying to get, which is the closed gate on the right side of the screen right now. Okay, after we leave the church's cellar, we go put away anything which we are running around with, which is taking up precious space in our storage. I see I'm too lazy to improve anything about the overall quality, however as there are still bodies from the start of the game, I will definitely need to work on exhuming these as they are lowering the overall quality. And here comes the donkey with his Bolshevik propaganda. Here the donkey will tell us he, that he will have demands and also he craps on the floor, which is super rude. If we step into the crap, the controls get super wanky and we keep sliding across the floor. So please make sure to watch where you step. <laughs> Okay, let's try to see if we can fix this body into a decent shape. Yeah, we failed. So most likely this will be our first burned victim. Let's therefore extract anything usable in future or now. 
and see what we can do. Oh, I'm stripping down this body completely, leaving only the heart intact. So this is how it looks. It burns, and after it's done, we get a pile of ashes. But at least I can store the body parts until the next week when we will have future fate points after we conduct our additional sermon. As you can see I have left in the church's cellar only the organs which we did not research as of now. And since burning bodies require billets, I will chop down an additional tree as we are running low on our wood supply. Here I will at least start working on those benches. However, that will all come on the next episode of Not Your Professional Walkthroughs. My name is Max, and I will see you next time. Till then, bye. And please make sure to subscribe to my horrible channel, as I have plans to do more projects later on based on your feedback on the overall quality of Graveyard Keeper. See you next time.